Hi friends, Pradeep Pandyala, Professor of Anesthesiology. Friends, today I am going to talk about antiarrhythmic drugs. I am sure many, many people have a lot of doubts on this antiarrhythmic drugs and the latest development. The things which come to your mind when you talk about antiarrhythmic drugs, the first thing is amidaron, flaconide, ibutilide, lidocaine, procainamide, propafenone, quinidine and tocanine. These are the drugs. Fine. Four classes of uh, antiarrhythmic drugs, von William classification. Everybody talks about that. The basics, that is class 1, sodium channel blockers, class 2, beta blockers, class 3, potassium channel blockers and class 4, calcium channel blockers. And few drugs which come under miscellaneous are digitalis, cardiac glycosides and adenosine. I'm sure you all know the best part of is amidaron. It's considered to be the most potent antiarrhythmic agent. The adverse even profile with amidaron can be intolerable with gastrointestinal effects and most common side effects. I'll talk about more about the um, problems with antiarrhythmic drugs later. The uh, I'm sure you all know the von Williams classification, the most antiarrhythmic drugs are grouped into four main classes, as I just mentioned, based on their dominant cellular electrophysiologic effects. And dihydropyridines like amlodipine, nicardipine, nifedipine are highly selective for calcium channels on the vascular smooth muscle tissue. So they are primarily used to treat hypertension. On the other hand, non-dihydropine, uh, non-dihydropyridines group of uh, drugs like uh, verapamil and diltiazem are wonderful antiarrhythmic drugs and they come into the group of class 4 as per the Vaughan William classification. <laughs> Friends, when we talk about this, many times few words come and people keep getting confused. What are they? Like orthodromic AVRT. It refers to the re-entrant tachycardia that uses the AV node. His one axis as the anti-grade limb and the AP. AP is action potential as the retrograde limb. Orthodromic AVRT accounts for more than 90% of AVRT and 20% to 30% are sustained SVTs. Now, only about 5% of the tachycardias in patients who have Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome are antidromic tachycardias, whereas remaining 95% are orthodromic. Antidromic AVRT is a wide QRS complex, fully pre-excited tachycardia in the presence of atrial tachycardia, atrial flutter, AVNRT. The QRS complexes can also be pre-excited when the action potential acts as a bystander and is not critical part of the re-entry circuit. Orthodromic therefore means conducting impulses in the normal or correct direction. Orthodromic denotes the propagation of an impulse along the conduction system. For example, nerve fiber. That is in the direction it normally travels. Friends, when we talk about uh, antiarrhythmic drugs, you should be very clear about what is cardiac action potential. Cardiac action potential is the cycle of ion movement, which leads to successive depolarization repolarization of the cardiac myocyte leading to muscle contraction. The resulting phase of the cardiac uh, monocyte has a resting membrane potential of usually 80 to 90 millivolts at baseline. The antiarrhythmic medications essentially slow ion movement in various phases like phase 0, the depolarization phase, the action potential occurs by the rapid movement of the sodium ions into the cell. So that's what. In this phase 1, the notch initial or early repolarization phase of the action potential involves efflux, efflux of potassium ions. Phase 2, the plateau phase, this phase is a balance of invert calcium 
ion moment that offsets the outward potassium moment. Phase 3 is the repolarization phase of action potential. This phase is primarily caused by the movement of potassium ion along the electrochemical gradient. Phase 4 is the restoration of sodium potassium ATPase, which restores the resting membrane potential of the cardiac myocyte. Now, uh, as I had mentioned, antiarrhythmic drugs which comes in class 1 are fast sodium channel blockers. They are responsible for phase 0 of the fast response cardiac cycle potential. Then, which comes to the drugs which you should be knowing about is the like three subclasses differ in their efficacy for the reducing the slope of phase 0 with 1C drugs having the greatest and 1B drugs having the smallest effect on phase 0. Sodium channel blockade 1C is always more than 1A and 1B. Now coming to class 2 antiarrhythmic uh, drugs are nothing but beta adrenergic uh, activation of adenylate cyclase which reduce intracellular cyclic AMP levels and therefore reduce the calcium influx resulting in decreased sinoatrial node pacing and triggering activity increase in the atrioventricular node and conduction time and thus refractoriness. Refractoriness. Class 3 antiarrhythmics block the potassium channels I had mentioned and resulting in prolonged atrial perconjunctival action potential. Recurring increased and, and this causes the prolonged QT intervals. Amiodarone also exerts sympathylytic sodium and calcium antagonistic property that decrease conduction through AV and sinus nerve. Class 4 antiarrhythmic inhibits slow calcium channels and decreases the slope of phase 0, 0 and 4 resulting in inhibition of SA and pacing, inhibition of the AV in conduction and prolonged ERP and PR interval. Now, adenosine causes a transient avian block that terminates SVT via hyperpolarization by increasing potassium efflux and inhibiting calcium current. Digoxin is a sodium potassium ATPase inhibitor by binding with the sodium pump it increases intracellular sodium concentration that will drive calcium influx. Now friends would you believe every drug whichever antiarrhythmic have been mentioned they have several side effects. In the beginning of this lecture, I did mention. Now, practically speaking, they try to suppress arrhythmia with the medication. The medication themselves can lead to other arrhythmias. That's strange but true. Now, I'll tell you what. Uh, for example, one a sodium channel blockers like quinidine and trocanamide and disoperamide all effectively prolong the QTC interval. Okay, now what is this QTC? QT is nothing but QTC. C is corrected interval. Okay, QT interval you know. And QTC is corrected QTC interval. And thus increase the risk of ventricular tachycardia. And uh, best example is tosidus depointus. And uh, 1A antiarrhythmics are more drug specific. Procanamide may induce SLE, slippers arrhythmosis. Uh, my commanding officer wife had suffered with this SLE, a severe problem. Procanamide can induce SLE, that is usually reversible, sometimes it can prolong for very long and cause very serious morbidity and mortality too. An adverse effect caused by treatment with quinine is known as synchronism, that includes uh, tinnitus, nausea, dizziness, headache, visual changes. Disopyramide has an anticholinergic effect and accounts for many adverse side effects like dry skin, thirst, hypothermia, mediasis, confusion, agitation. And due to anti-arrhythmogenic effect, 
and uh, they are contraindicated in post myocardial 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 infarction patient the beta blockers per se can cause many side effects like cardiovascular it can cause severe bradycardia av block and uh, beta blockers obviously should not be given in congestive heart failure and asthma and copd patient it can cause severe problem all potassium channel blockers have severe side effect uh, the reason is very simple because they have this tendency the t wave on the ecg as you know represent ventricular repolarization phase 3 of the action potential represent repolarization if potassium channel blockers is given this prolongs phase 3 of the action potential due to the slow efflux of potassium ions the repolarization phase of the action potential is prolonged the t wave on the corresponding ecg also gets prolonged which creates an elongated qtc interval amiodarone which i had mentioned in the beginning that i'll be talking has wide ranging problem best worst rather is corneal micro deposits in the eye hypothyroidism as well as hyperthyroidism it can cause pulmonary fibrosis and the latest version of amiodarone is drowed and drawn is not for use in patient with severe heart failure or decompone decompensated heart failure it's a wonderful drug in especially in permanent atrial fibrillation um rather should not be used in permanent atrial fibrillation but it is the latest anti arrhythmic drugs so as i have mentioned every drug can have problem like verapamil may cause some unwanted effects such as av block bradycardia and constipation and diltiazem can cause edema headache and dizziness adenosine itself have adverse effects which includes flushing impending doom and sweating so that's it every drug has a problem adenosine should be avoided in patients with svt involving accessory pathways i'm sure you know svt accessory pathways the first thing which comes to your mind is wp w syndrome bull parkinson by syndrome antidromic avrt due to risk of tachycardia exacerbation thanks for patient listening have a wonderful day until next time take care bye bye